by way of introduction to this uh, module, uh, media and globalization, I'd like you to uh, think about these questions. In what ways are the media part of globalization? Especially with relation to technologies. You know, with the internet and uh, the World Wide Web, um, access to um, the, the web and the internet through uh, mobile devices, uh, internet cafes all over the world, um, you know, social media like Twitter and Facebook, which we've seen in the media lately, especially the uprisings in Egypt or just about a year ago or so. Um, uh, how does the media, the media in general, uh, play a part in globalization? Also, what are some of the key features of globalization and as they relate to the media of communication? Just like we were talking about, you know, in those areas, um, not only state-run news, but then also communicating student, uh, students and uh, people that live in countries that um, are ha have uh, restrictions on on what uh, they can and cannot uh, receive through the state media, but are able to access through other other portals like um, social media networks. So, what what are what are some of those key features? What are some of the things that that are really influencing uh, globalization today? Also, what is the substance of debates about imperialism, global flows, and hybridization? Uh, you know the. Yankee go home <laughs> so a scenario from the 20th century. Today we hear um, not so much about that, but about the dictators and um, you know a lot of, of just within the past year, you know, with Saddam Hussein and uh, Muammar Gaddafi and Osama bin Laden and some of these uh, leaders, uh, you know, around the world that have been um, you know at odds with the West and how. Um, has the media uh, influenced those debates as well? And finally, um, how meaningful are con uh, global uh, owner concepts of global ownership, global audiences, and global culture uh, today? Just think about in your in your own area of the world, where wherever you may be, um, are you affected by globalization? Is it a, is it a concept? Uh, that you're dealing with and have to think about. Uh, I know I do uh, just almost daily. I mean, just where things are brought in from, products, even the iPad, uh, my smartphone, um, you know, dishes, uh, utensils, tools, uh, let alone um, working with students from all over the world in my in my job and where I travel to conferences and things like that. So um, pretty big, uh, pretty big influence with globalization and and the media's effect on it. So as I introduce that, we'll now move into um, some other uh, questions as far as going into um, questions to consider for uh, this, this section and then into globalization uh, as a history. This section here I think is really um, important from the reading on globalization as history points out about in the past um, you know, globalization had more to do with trading spices and goods from around the world, like uh, artifacts and things that you couldn't get in other parts of the world. And, and that's somewhat still true today, uh, but that's more of a 20th century model. 21st century models, a lot of information going back and forth, technologies, advanced technologies, things like that, as it points out, you know, DVD players and electronics and things like that coming from, uh, from Asia uh, to the United States. Um, and to the West in particular uh, because of cheap labor costs and how that uh, globalization um, has taken a, a different uh, turn with uh, the media. And you look at that in regards to um, history, how it's just sort of sh uh, shifted over the years. Uh, people have always traveled and have always, um, you know, with with trading and things like that, but now in a, on a more advanced scale with with the uh, uh, evolution of the media and uh, with with the opportunities that people that the common common person is given um, with different pieces of media and um, and and being able to to see what's going on in other parts of the world through movies and and documentaries and and travel shows and things like that and, and to be able to learn about these things through the History Channel and other 
um, networks like Discovery Channel and all that it just to, to bring us up to speed uh, in a much quicker way and much more informed um, than, than our ancestors were. This area to me is very important uh, with the idea of global flows and other uh, cultures, more dominant cultures perhaps, um, you know, becoming an imposition on imposing their cultural views and 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 uh, ideas on on smaller cultures um, in in a, in a way that where this sort of uh, absorbing them into a larger global culture and to the extinction of a local culture. Uh, we um, my family and I lived for for a number of years overseas and saw this quite a bit. Um, yeah, especially you still see. Um, in, in, in Oceania, in the Southeast Asia areas of the world, um, a lot of European influence uh, from the times when they, you know, had uh, conquered uh, many of those countries where it was once said that the sun never sets on the, on the British Empire. And so those influences are still there, although the, the culture and the language uh, still survive to, a, to an extent. Um, a lot of that... Uh, is, is even more pronounced today because of the arrival of goods into the country through media like um, uh, the MTV or VH1, music, um, movies from the West, and, 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 and things coming in to influence folks. It's just an amazing um, you know, turn of events through the, the powerful uh, medium of, of movies and music and things like that. For example, we lived in Papua New Guinea up in the Eastern Highlands province for about uh, six or seven years in the mid-90s. And um, they were still talking about the uh, movies of Sylvester Stallone about Rambo and was that guy real? And they, they just he was a hero to them because he could live out in the jungle in the bush and survive and, and take on a whole army. And, and getting ideas like that and getting their information <laughs> about other cultures through the media um, it is, we laugh at it. It's kind of comical from our perspective, but how much of that do we do as well? Uh, we might see a tidbit of something in a program or on a news show and think, oh, that's how everybody is over there. Or, you know, that's how they do it. And, and that sort of influences, um, our ideas of, of other cultures. And we, um, rather than, you know, having a trade-off, we become kind of more, you know, black and white on things and, and a lot of less gray. So um, this is this is really, really a, an important area um, and, and with the media and how it does affect the, the global flows of how we view other cultures and they view us and the dominance that, that other cultures can have with, you know, powerful media, divide, you know, media and influence that way. The facets of globalization, I think for most of us, is pretty clear seeing how uh, the the different cultures, uh, countries of the world, I should say, especially in the in Europe, uh, with the recent uh, economic crisis that we faced on a global scale has really affected uh, those countries, especially countries like Greece and, and some of the others, Italy, uh, Italy Spain, um, some, some countries like that that have, have really felt the impact and it's, it's uh, had shockwaves felt really literally all over the world in the different uh, stock markets and people's retirement accounts and things like that. And we see that no longer are we isolated uh, by by uh, our geographic uh, borders, but that it's we're being influenced uh, because we are connected globally on a um, within with our finances, uh, the, the the trade agreements that we have with partners and. Uh, we just see how that um, these nations no longer stand alone with their e economic um, interests and things like that. There's, we're all intertwined anymore uh, on a global scale, um, as well as so is information um, and social contact. We're being able to instantly, you know, uh, see each other te through technology, through you know, the computer and our mobile devices being able to, to call up people through the internet and to talk and to have video chats and uh, literally almost anywhere in the world that has an internet connection. So uh, the facets of globalization continue to to uh, shrink and continue to influence us in so many uh, ways because of, of the 
um, the way technology has been integrated and the media has been able to use that vehicle to uh, to spread the message around the world and be able to influence more and more people. Um, and and we see that the, the interdependence that we have with other uh, nations and countries um, is 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 very much affects us. Uh, no longer are we isolated and and basically just based on our own national interests and national uh, decisions that we make, but it's things from around the world influence us just like the you know the price of gas. I mean it can go up or down. Sure we pass taxes and that raises the price and it kind of keeps us at a certain level. but once there's a, a crisis in, in one of those areas um, in the Middle East or uh, in South America or someplace where oil's coming out of, uh, will directly influence the, our price overnight. So, um, so this is something that's that's really uh, important to consider as well. Yeah, this area here, globalization technology, is probably one of my favorite areas. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I really, you know, with being an online instructor and being able to influence students all over the world through technology and the media that we have available, uh, social media as well as uh, Web 2.0 uh, uh, programs we're able to use and different platforms with mobile devices and, and uh, the computer and, and notebook computing, uh, netbooks, just so many ways to see all over the world with just a data link. You know, you see these guys out in the middle of nowhere with a little satellite uplink and being able to, um, you know, transmit video all over the world. Uh, it's just amazing to see. Um, all of the opportunities we have, automation, you know, being able to automate things, it's just incredible. Uh, programming things with our with our little uh, handheld mobile devices that we carry around, our smartphones and things like that. So globalization with technologies is um, is really really an effect that will continue to reverberate and continue in the future, only to become more and more of an influence technology. Uh, going forward. I mean, you, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out, but you can see how the uh, technology is really, really shrinking the world quickly with uh, and the idea of globalization and interconnectivity uh, with others around the world. So lots of opportunities um, on the horizon for us. I think when we talk about this area with institutions and global ownership with media, uh, this is something I guess probably more and more that shows uh, the dominance of the West, maybe the new imperialism with allowing our, you know, from the West to influence so much all over the world, you know, with the creators of a lot of, of TV shows and movies and originating documentaries. Uh, other countries are doing somewhat of that, but on the, not on the scale as, as those who are in the West. And I think this is having a very profound effect on, uh, on other cultures around the world. So I mentioned earlier about the movie about Rambo and um, another thing kind of chuckle about, but was when Superman was big, I guess in the late eighties, early nineties, the, the original ones um, with uh, Christopher uh, Reeve and uh, people actually came up to me and asked, is there a guy in America who flies around like that? Is this, you know, with a cape and, you know, so those sort of things we, we laugh and think about, but um, you know, we really, uh, and, you know, in a lot of ways need to be careful in some ways where where some of this is released. But I mean, if we're, it's inevitable. I mean, we're not going to stop it, obviously. And and cultures are, you know, um, these are very primitive cultures in Papua New Guinea, obviously. But, um, you know, they're they're gaining, you know, coming into the, the 21st century, maybe from a from, you know, a Stone Age culture uh, to the 21st century and such a much faster pace than any of us in the West that are normal, you know, have grown up with this as being normal for us, uh, with technology and, you know, think of the kids today, the millennials and, and the children that are, that are raised, you know, even within the last you know four or five years that have been born and, and all the things that they will expect to have, uh, as a result of, you know, technology's influence. And, and this, this has, has a, a huge effect around the world. So, um, this is a really, really important piece to think through. And in this area, in global genres, I think for most folks, um, 
you know, it's pretty much a super cultural or transcultural concept of movies and video, video in particular, music, um, you know, represented in all cultures, obviously music, but, you know, video is very powerful um, uh, tool and means to show people uh, things of other cultures. They love to, you know, especially the folks we worked with in New Guinea, love to watch action movies and, and hero movies and things like that. Uh, you think of you know, some of the backlash in some of the Middle Eastern cultures against the West has been our has been our um, movie industry and, and things like that and the, the negative influence that they see that as opposed to their ideology. So um, these genres, you know, not only is it um, film and, and television, but also uh, music. Music is a huge influence around the world with, um, you know, uh, songs and, and, and musicians that are very popular on world tours and things. And Michael Jackson's probably big, big or bigger in Japan than he was, um, in the States. Well, probably not in, in, in his heyday, but, uh, you know, with lately, but, uh, just, just to see the influence of, of the genres uh, around the world and how people identify, um, and are, and connect, uh, globally, uh, through these different media is interesting to to think about and to and to consider. And I think this this area here on global audiences, uh, how people view different things through media. Um, for example, we may think that seeing a a lady like, for example, from the reading brought up about how Muslim culture may react to a woman in a in a news story or something, and um, even in printed media. And I know for where we lived in Papua New Guinea that that too was something that was offensive to see a, a woman's bare leg or in fitted uh, trousers or shorts or something like that. Um, women were always covered, um, you know, especially the thighs, inner thighs down, um, you know, maybe halfway to their knee or something like that, but never to show the inner thigh. And, and so we may think that in the West that we're communicating one thing, but they may as a reading point, I thought was very, very good was, you know, motives and things like that. And do, um, why are we, you know, kind of painting it this way and maybe a totally unintended consequent or intention, um, you know, not at all intentional, but could come across because, uh, the culture, the, the host culture will see it in a different, different light just based on their cultural grid. So these are some really important things to think about as far as, how other cultures filter things and care, you know, to be careful. And, and a lot of times I think the, a lot of misunderstandings have been, um, you know, have occurred as a result of just not, um, making assumptions or not taking into consideration another culture and how they may view something, um, you know, and, and could possibly, you know, really a f create a barrier of communication and opportunity to work with one another. Finally, as we wrap this up, this this lecture, I think cultures and identities, a, little, a brief discussion about that is important. Um, just considering how globalization is, in a lot of sense, people are more identifying with the, um, the, the maybe more of a cohort of, of an age group that they identify with or a particular movement than their own, their own country, the nationalistic, um, idea or or ideal um a lot of that still that does exist but i think with the younger generation with the, the globalization wanting to be connected with others wanting to be able to the freedom to travel and to communicate with one another through the different social media uh the barriers being broken down a lot of uh diversity in, in schools and opportunities through education uh to work and interact with one another as well as you know corporations their bottom line is about you know, globalization anymore and being able to work in other countries and other markets. And uh, so I think, you know, this is something to, to, to carefully consider going forward uh, in education with the identities and, you know, local governments and what their concerns may be, uh, may, may have some effect on the opportunities that we have for education. You know, that's one of the things that uh, we're considering about working in China and uh, trying to do things through an online uh, teaching and courses is, is, you know, by the government, they, they in China wants to more or less kind of keep that nailed down and, can, and have that control over what's being uh, taught. And so if you take out the electronic or the 
online courses, then you know who's doing the face-to-face. -face. You can kind of more or less control that. So see how these sort of things will influence, you know, and, and be um, some of the things that are how decisions are based about how we can um, effectively work in some cultures uh, based off of where the um, identity is going forward, whether uh, countries are more open or want to be more focused and closed and more of a control. So something to definitely consider and think through. So appreciate you listening through on this uh, module, and uh, we look forward to the to the next next time we we get together. Thank you.